Without a doubt, this is the most amount of money I've ever spent at one of these fairs on the most amount of games and I could not be happier with what I've found. Retro Ghetto. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Retro Ghetto. It's finally game market day. We are en route now to Leeds. I've got the whole squad with me. Big hitter Kev. Woo! The man big. <laughs> game market! Game market! Energy drink Theo. Big Dan in the back. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Right, you can see the smile on my face. I'm here with my friend Jonathan. Look what for me. I honestly think that could be my best pick up of the day. I might just go home now. Thanks a lot, my friend. I am honestly made up with this. My first Spartan. It doesn't mean I've got to buy another one now because of my symmetrical display, but yeah, man. Okay, so it's always that just got in debate. Do I do a quick lap? Do I follow everybody else? Right now, I'm just kind of wandering, looking for an empty space. But like I say, it's a decent sized venue. Let's do it. Okay, half a lap in, first purchase of the day. Nice steel book, nice big box collector's edition. Got a good price. Yeah, man, I'm feeling good. That and my Lego figure, I'm nice already. Everything else is a bonus. Right, 10 seconds later, another nice purchase. But more importantly, a fellow Ram in the building. I mean, you couldn't miss him, could you? Let's be honest. He must some jacket. That's just a ginger beer, isn't it? A little spin. So as you just saw, I started the day very much as I intended to continue it and that is with purchasing video games. So that first stall pretty much that I looked at, I bought two items. The first one was this absolutely beautiful steelbook and this is the Dark Souls 2 Black Armor Edition. I've always been a big admirer of this steelbook. I actually own this on the PlayStation 3, shout out to Corbin on that one. And uh, with me being such a big Xbox 360 collector at the moment, I'm really enjoying my Xbox 360 display. When I saw this, I thought, yeah, I want to be adding that to my current 360 setup. So I was really happy to see this. I picked this one up alongside this game here. Now, viewers of the channel will know I'm on a bit of a Nintendo Wii kick at the moment when it comes to Nintendo Wii Cardboard, the bigger box items, and I've actually never seen this before in person. This is the Monster Hunter Classic Controller Pro Pack. Um, 
like I say, I love Nintendo Cardboard in all its various guises, right? But there is one thing that annoys me about this. I don't know if you can tell, but it's just weird the way the hang tab's located at the front of the box. It looks like that should be at the back. It's going to be quite an awkward one to display this, but yeah, uh, the fact this comes with its own classic Pro controller, I mean, that alone sells for like £8, I think, at CEX. And I got both of these, I think, for a combined I think, £30. I was more than happy with that. It was a great start to the fair, and like I say, it was very much me starting the way in which I intended to carry on. And quickly lived up to that, because the very next store that I went to, You've seen it on the footage, I picked up this, R-Type Delta. So, I've recently been making big changes to my PlayStation 1 collecting. I recently did a big call, sold a lot of the games to CEX when the prices went very high on those games. And I turned my PS1 collection into an all-killer, no-filler shelf. If it didn't have emotional or nostalgic memories or a game that I intended to play again, it got called. However, there was a couple of titles that I really wanted to add to the new all-killer, no-filler shelf. This being one of them. This, in fact, is the only game that I purchased all day that I didn't manage to haggle on. I actually paid full price for this one, as you can see, £42. The gentleman who stole it was was not moving at all, so fair play to him. And I was happy to pay it because that's in and around what it sells for. It's in really nice, complete condition. And yeah, just a very interesting game. The fourth instalment, the R-Type series, dropped in 1998. This futuristic shmup is set in the year 2169. The game offers various different fighters and different cannon options and introduces something known as the Dose System, which allows you to absorb energy through collisions with projectiles and different enemies. When the dosage becomes 100%, you can then utilise the fighter's Delta attack. This is a game that came out to critical acclaim at the time and still to this day is highly regarded, hence its highest price tag. And yeah, this is one of the few games I was actively looking for today, so I was very happy to tick this one off the list early on, and that left just one other PlayStation 1 title that I wanted to be adding to my all-killer no-filler shelf, and maybe we'll find that today as well. So I'm sure to nobody's surprise, if you was watching the footage, you saw me pick up Dante's Inferno. This, surprisingly, is that first and only PlayStation 3 Essential that I managed to find today. I think that's because a few ghetto gang members beat me to it. There's a few people in the Discord were showing me how many Essentials they picked up, so I must have missed out on a few. But I was more than happy to add this one to my ever-growing Essential set. I think that puts me on about 75 now, so yeah, we're getting closer to the 200 that I need to complete that subset. Uh, this is a game that I really enjoy. I played this a couple of years back, and whilst it is very much a God of War 3 clone, for me, that's not a bad thing. God of War 3 is one of my favourite games of all time, and whilst this doesn't quite hit those heights, it's still right up there in terms of, yeah, one of my favourite hack and slash games of that era. And also on that store, I picked up a game, another one I've been actively pursuing and was hoping to find today. I actually mentioned it on last weekend's vlog, and that is the Prince of Persia Trilogy. With me currently playing my way through the new Prince of Persia on the Switch, it's got me intrigued as to the origins of the Prince of Persia story, especially the trilogy that came out in and around the PlayStation 2 era. This is the only way that you can play those games in HD, and this is a game which has been on the increase in terms of pricing, especially since the new games dropped to such, you know, fanfare. Uh, this was actually really well priced at just £15. I picked up both of these games from this store for £20, and this one alone I think would cost you like £21 posted from CEX. So yeah, I was really, really happy with those finds. Right, so I've probably done half, so I've only done the outer perimeter, I've not done the inside. I've bought more games and spent more money than I have at the last three or four game fairs. It's been a big start, so yeah, we'll keep going, we'll keep going, we'll keep wanting, we'll find some.
Hyper Trigger X, check him out. Main man. Yeah, man. Link in the description to both these quality, quality channels. These two cost me a lot of money. Obscure games you've never heard of. These are your men, trust me. So you'll have seen me briefly speaking to a couple of tubers that I have hyped on this channel before, both of which I love watching, especially their pickups videos, and that is Hyper Trigger X and Eddie Rollercore. These guys have some of the best pickups videos on YouTube, and yeah, if, uh, if you like finding out about weird and obscure titles and potentially costing you money, then make sure you check out their channels. There will be a link in the description below. I was hoping I would actually see these guys again and have a more in-depth chat, but the, it just became so busy, especially once the floodgates opened at midday. It was sort of standing room only, and sadly, I never made it back around to them. But whilst I was there, I did manage to pick up some fantastic games from Eddie. You remember me saying that I was hoping to find the other PlayStation 1 game that I needed for my collection? Well, I found it not long after, and that was R-Types. Um, I think... This is just the first R-Type and the second R-Type uh, put together on a disc for the PlayStation 1. Uh, this isn't in the best condition and it's got a big crack in it and it's missing its manual. But the deal that Eddie did me on these was absolutely fantastic. And I do still have um, some sort of lower end PlayStation 1 games, if you like, that didn't make the shelf. That are still hidden away and I'll just do like a case swap and uh, be adding this to the collection. And yeah, that was the two games I wanted to add to that shelf. Just R-Types and R-Type Delta and yeah, before I'd even done half a lap. Uh, I managed to add both of those to my collection and that takes us to the first heavy hitter of the day. Um, yeah, I've mentioned many times how I want to complete the Mega Drive Schmup subset and uh, a pivotal part of that was this, Thunder Force 3. Now you might be looking at this thinking, Callum, you only collect PAL, you don't buy Genesis games. Well this is an interesting one. Um, Thunder Force 4 is arguably my favourite game on the Mega Drive. Absolutely love that game. It's the game that made me fall in love with Schmops. I've spoke about it many, many times before on the channel. So it would seem natural that I would have bought Thunder Force 3 before now, but this is one of them strange games that did get a PAL release. This is the official PAL release. It's part of the PAL set. It just comes in a Genesis uh, case, I guess. But it plays on PAL systems. And like I say, this is officially part of the PAL set. And not only that, we have sort of proof in here of its original purchase uh, within Stevenage. Toys R Us Stevenage, £40. It only cost me slightly more than that, thanks to Eddie's great deal that he did for me. Um, I love seeing things like this. We've also got like a membership card in here. Electronics, arts, video game registration, all that good stuff in there. And yeah, um, just one that not many people are aware of that is part of the PAL set. And yeah, it takes me ever closer to that full subset of shmups, but more importantly, a game that I really want to play. I'm sure I've heard Eddie speak about this one before being his favourite in the franchise, so if this is better than Thunder Force 4, then yeah, I I'm in for a treat with this one. madness continues I'm still I don't know probably roughly 60% and everywhere I've been I bought something like every aisle I've made a purchase it's there's so much good stuff here it's really refreshing to see I'm absolutely buzzing I'm probably gonna buy something else yeah. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, nice to meet you here. And you, my friend. Yeah. Thank you, man. How are you doing today? I've bought loads already, I have. Yeah, we 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 come up through Kent, we stopped into Conway Courtness on the way up. Oh, mate, that's that's dangerous on its own, isn't it? Uh, cracking place and uh, yeah, enjoying it. I think it's a bit of everything. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mate, I've bought more at this fair than I bought the last three or four game fairs put together already. Yeah, I've not even got around yet.
as predicted. I did spend money at that store. Um, I got such a good deal that the, <laughs> the guy that negotiated with me actually got told off by the owner. I almost felt bad, almost. I can't believe how much stuff I've bought. I'm like, I've still not even seen everything yet. Madness. So moving on to the games that I almost got a man sacked for. Apologies for that if you're watching, <laughs> but thank you for the deal. Uh, you guys know I had to come away with some Super Nintendo cardboard. It was uh, imperative for me that I was going to be leaving with some games for my collection. It is undoubtedly getting harder for me to add games to this collection at this point because, I mean, I'm almost halfway into a full set, so most of the games that I need are obscure or very expensive. And on the day, whilst there was a lot of Super Nintendo games, the ones that I needed I felt were either overpriced or just weren't quite in the condition. However, I did manage to find a couple of obscure, uncommon titles. As I say, very well priced. Uh, the first one of those two is the Dual Test Drive. This is a 1992 distinctive software developed racer and weirdly for a game named The Duel has no two player option and yeah, as you'll be seeing on screen now, it's a first person racer and I don't think it's the best game ever released on the system if I'm being honest, but just one of them games that you don't see too often. Speaking of first person racers that aren't great but you don't see too often, <laughs> like buses that come along at once, uh, race driving. Uh, not really much to say about this one, you'll be seeing on screen now, very similar to the game I've just showed you coincidentally, but uh, I managed to get both of these for an almost job losing price <laughs> of £40. So yeah, just happy to be adding some Nintendo cardboard to the Super Nintendo wall that I didn't already own. And These aren't the only Super Nintendo games I picked up that weekend, but more of that on Sunday's vlog. So you'll have just seen me checking out the stall of the legend that is Craig's here again. He was stalling with Retro Import Gamer. It was nice to meet you for the first time. The reason I call Craig a legend is he's a top bloke and his prices are phenomenal. And he sold me a game which has probably become my favourite PS4 game in my whole collection. Granted my PS4 game collection isn't huge but this is a game that... I've spoke about it so many times on the channel that I feel like I don't want to bore you, but my love for it is so strong that I wanted to double dip. I wanted the excuse to play through it again and maybe getting the trophies and maybe even platinum in this game. I don't know, that might be a bit adventurous. <laughs> Just gave me the impetus to play this game once again and I got the limited edition version of it from Pixel Heart and that is Andro Dunos 2. Just one of my favourite shooters ever. I always say it every time, I'm going to say it again. Perfect shmup for anybody, whether you're new to the genre or you're an experienced old head at it. Uh, yeah, this game just has everything you could ever want. Perfect sort of uh, modern retro visuals, arguably one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. If you watch my vlogs, you'll have heard the music from this game numerous times. And yeah, I, I was absolutely delighted with the price that Craig did me this on. £20. I mean, almost a steal, right? And speaking of steel, it comes with a steel book. And look how beautiful the artwork is on this one. Yeah, um, it's not very often I feel the need to double dip outside of things I'm going for full sets of. Um, but with this, yeah, the love is so strong that, like I say, I just wanted more than just the standard version that I currently own on the Switch, and any reason to play it again is a good one for me, so massive shout out to Craig for the fantastic deal on this one.
Right, I bumped into the legends. Dad and lads gaming. Hello everybody. Hi Yara, it's Pearls of Wisdom. I'm not playing Pearls of Wisdom. What do you think of it? I've not just got it. It's not a shame, yeah. It's a shame. All the point and clicks are in this bag. <laughs> this fine gentleman here, I was giving him some trainer love yesterday, <laughs> right? But these are the same pair you're wearing yesterday. They are, they are. You'll notice. Exactly, the yeah. Mariah Carey, the, <laughs> the Mariah Carey wall road changes. Yeah. <laughs> right, just come out for some fresh air and you can see people are still queuing and it's rammed. I'm slightly concerned as to what it's going to be like in there because you couldn't move your elbows before all these people came in, so I don't know, it's gonna get real busy. Um, I've bought that much stuff, some great stuff, that even if I don't make another pickup or purchase, I'm uh, I'm more than happy with everything that I've got. I, yeah, I keep saying it, but I've surprised myself by how much good stuff's here. Uh, we're gonna go and do a fresh air break, drop all these games off, because I've got no more capacity in the bag. As you can see, the lads have also been busy, so we'll film all the pickups, we'll film everything they bought as well, uh, before we get out of here, but let's just go and get a bit of fresh air. Okay, so I bought a copy of Ranger X for £70. Dan the man bought a copy of Ranger X for... Oh. Is that a reprint? <laughs> <laughs> Which one's in better condition? Because I think this looks like the colour pops a bit more on this one. In in Dan's defence, he didn't pay 90 quid for that. He aggled, so he got it cheaper. What, did you get it for 85? Well, I bought... It would have been 85 on yeah, that. Yeah, I bought a few games. What's it like inside? It well, was nice a, inside. That's a Chris manual. Yeah, it is. Shame, it is. Shame, shame it's the wrong way around. Mine's the right way around, so I think I'll win. How much did you pay for yours, Callum? 70 quid, mate. I'd have had yours for that money. Well, that's because mine's better and it's cheaper. But my manual's not going really turns. That manual's better and Dan's. Fifteen pounds. There ain't much in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that fake smile's crumbling. <laughs> <laughs> So as you've seen, I had to step out from the madness for some fresh air, some much needed caffeine, and I was comparing condition of this game with my friend Dan, and that is one of my other heavy hitting purchases of the day. A game which I've been after for quite some time. I missed out on it a couple of times when it came to stock at CEX, and yeah, it was one of them games that's always just been on the peripheral, but I've never quite pulled the trigger. But you'll be seeing very shortly how good this game looks, and that is Ranger X. I mean, the graphics say it all, right? The box art is just as fantastic, and yeah, just one that I'm very, very eager to get in the machine and play. It's a side-scrolling run and gun released in 1993. And you pilot an exoskeleton tax with leading the fight from your home planet against the invading Rahuna forces. Ranger X is equipped with a whole different set of arsenal of weapons. You've got everything from a jetpack to flamethrowers to machine guns and all sorts in between. And even levels that involve motorbikes and other vehicles. And yeah, it, it just looks like a good time, right? I mean, what more could you want? You're playing as an exoskeleton. You're blowing up everything in sight with fantastic visuals. There's even like parallax scrolling in the background. And yeah, like I say, just one which for some reason that gone under the radar for me. I wasn't really aware of this game uh, until like a year or so ago and th at that point I knew I'd have to have it eventually and this is in really nice condition. I got this for a decent price. I think I paid like £70 which I think is what you pay for an unboxed version at CEX so I was happy enough with that and yeah I want to give a shout out to Dan as well. Uh, I only actually met Dan on this trip. Uh, he came with Kev and Dan is going for a full Mega Drive set and guys I'm just going to say now right Sunday's vlog. Do not miss it because You've never seen pickups like it. I'm not going to say any more, but it's a madness. It, it's an actual movie that weekend, but we'll get to that more on Sunday. And yeah, massive shout out to Dan. It was great to meet you. And uh, whilst I was outside, I was actually given a few gifts as well. So I had the other channel approach me and uh, told me he was enjoying the channel. And he gave me worms. He saw that I recently picked up... <laughs> Saying that he gave me worms is uh, could be taken out of context, right? But he gave me worms, the video game. He'd seen that I recently picked up a box only of it. So this was fantastic. I think this is like £16, uh, car only. So I was really happy for him to give me this um, to add to my box. Also, he knows I'm a hip hop fan. So he gave me a few CDs. So we've got uh, the Proof album, which I've heard is a good one. Big Pun, Yeah Baby, which I had in my younger days. Really enjoyed it. And Eminem's first ever album, I believe, Infinite. So it was very kind of you. Much appreciated. You know who you are. And I was also gifted by a ghetto gang member, who shall remain nameless, this fantastic Xbox 360 wireless headset with Bluetooth, but it's still sealed. Love things like this. He knows I'm big on Xbox 360 at the moment, so that was very kind of you. And yeah, uh, we had a great chat, so thank you very much. And this is a good opportunity for me to address like the day itself and the support 
from so many people. Like, YouTube's one of them things, it's easy to um, keep abreast of how quote unquote well you're doing by the numbers, right? The numbers are there for everyone to see in terms of like your subscriber count or your view count going upwards. But when you go to an event like this, and you get that genuine feedback from people that don't just say they enjoy the channel, but they love the channel, how the vlogs have become part of their Sunday. It's genuinely um, like heartwarming to some extent. I wasn't expecting the amount of families that said they watched it. I thought it was just sad middle-aged men like myself. Uh, but yeah, there was sort of like families, you know, husbands with their partners and the children that all watch it on a Sunday. And yeah, it was honestly very humbling. A massive shout out to everybody that took the time to speak to me on the day. And yeah, uh, it was just amazing vibes all around. But yeah, uh, after the fresh air break, we went back inside and we bought more games. Okay, so full of caffeine and the queue's getting bigger by the second. Hoping this wristband's gonna get me in. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go and do part two. Thank you. So it was around this time that I was stood around with the whole squad and as I've already said, it was so busy, you could barely move. And I remember just seeing what looked like rubbish on the floor. And uh, I took a second look and I thought, is it rubbish? And I picked it up and it was certainly not rubbish. Uh, this is where I need you. You watching at home, I need your help. I need the whole retro video game collecting community to help get this back to the person that lost it because if I had lost this at a market and went home, I'd been spending you know, a decent amount of money on these items, I would be gutted. So as I said, I picked up this bag, I looked in it, and the first thing that I saw in this bag was a Neo Geo Pocket Color in stone blue. Not a cheap piece of kit, I wouldn't have thought. SNK isn't really my bag, but I'm pretty sure this isn't a cheap item. So I saw this, and there was also a couple of games in the bag. Now, I'm not gonna go into what the games were, because what I want people to do is Find who this belongs to. I want that person to message me. I'm contactable. Instagram, uh, my comment section. You can get me on Facebook. There's an email address. Any means necessary. Get in contact with me. Let me know the other games that are in the bag with this and we'll try and get this back to its rightful owner. I was in a weird situation because I found it surrounded by hundreds if not thousands of people and if I'd have said, whose is this? any number of people could have claimed it, right? It wasn't really anywhere obvious to give it into. Um, so I thought the best thing to do would be to use my platform to try and get this bag back to its owner, right? Because like I say, I would have been gutted after having been to a fair like that. It probably would have ruined my day. And I'm hoping I can make that person's day by getting this back to them. So please, as a community, get this video shared, do what we have to do to, yeah, ultimately find the owner of these lost games and get them back to where they should be.
finally caught up with my boy Theo, like I've not seen him all weekend. It's mad in here, isn't it? Games. It's mad in here. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I just said I weren't prepared for how busy it is. Like when we first got here, 100 people in queue. Yeah. 300 people outside waiting to get in. How many games you bought this weekend? Three so far. I'm so putting. Far. I'm putting all retro YouTube game collectors on alert. There's a new. Yeah, there's, a, there's a new game on there. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. <laughs> Man like bent legs. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, Forty three you know. That's the problem with SNES, you see, this is why I don't collect SNES games, because even this could sort of even, even run of the mill bits. Even bits nobody wants. Oh, another one. Oh, it's Mad in tip. 74.99, man. Only an idiot would go for a full SNES set. You know, um, even Bentlegs is getting into the video game buying spirit. What is yeah. this, Bents? I don't know, is the answer, but it's got... Straight away, this is you, Camera Rider and Ultraman, innit? I would see that and think Bents. It's like a little... Yeah, because they all look like him. Chibi. Yeah. yeah. Bents is like a little chibi. <laughs> kind of a human being. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like a bit inbred, a bit little. Let me, <laughs> let me know in the comments <laughs> what this game is. Love that. Tommy, what you bought? Nout. Nout. Marcus, what you um, bought? I know you bought stuff. No, free stuff. Uh, people are giving you stuff, yeah. Being given free stuff. I love free stuff. When you said to me you weren't buying anything, this is why, well, innit? You. <laughs> Ben legs, are you? Ben legs. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I'm calling it a wrap. Every time I do a lap, I'm spending more and more money. Um, definitely the best game fair I've ever been to in terms of like amazing stuff. Just yeah, the quality of stuff. This is gonna be my best pickups I think I've ever done on the channel. Even as I was leaving, I picked myself up a nice collector's edition. Um, but yeah, let's get back and take a look at what I've like done. You're all right. You like it, mate. Loved it. Get us spent up. Do you know what I liked about it the most? The company. Yeah, the company. The That's company. what it's all about, not the so people. Not today, but yesterday. It's not the games, it's the people. <laughs> <laughs> Come downhill today. Without a doubt, this is the most amount of money I've ever spent at one of these fairs on the most amount of games and I could not be happier with what I've found. It was just crazy, it was just one thing after another and even on the way out of the building, I was done, I was finished, I was spent up. I think the very last two stores on the corner as I was coming out, I bought some more games. The first one was from the fantastic people over at Doorway to Darkness, shout out to them. I absolutely love that shop, I have toured it on the video previously. Um, just, yeah, I just saw this, you, if you know me, you knew I had to grab this, right? Assassin's Creed 2, the complete edition. I, I love buying sleeve covers and things like that that I don't already own, and this will be going nicely in my Xbox 360 sleeve cover area over there, and yeah, this was just £1.99, really nice sort of gloss effect on this one, and yeah, there was no way I was going to let that pass me by, and on the very last stall, literally by the exit, this was just staring at me, like, <laughs> and I thought, oh... I'm gonna have to do it. It was at 35 pounds. I offered 30, they said yes. I don't regret it. It is another Xbox 360 collector's edition. I've got a few of these now, and I always say about how I love collecting the 360 collector's editions that have windows where you can see through to the figure inside and they're not too tall so I can display them on the shelf. And this ticked all those boxes. And that is Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Conviction. Yeah, it just looks Awesome, right? I don't know much about the game, haven't played it, but I absolutely love the way this has been displayed. I love the fact that it's got like the White House and that just sort of like leads into the window itself of the figure. It comes with a nice steel book as well. It's in really, really nice condition. And yeah, for 30 pounds, there's no way I was gonna let another collector's edition for the collection pass me by. And 
Sometimes I love picking up things like this because it inspires me to play the game. I think, I think to myself, if I'm going to look at it, I want to play it and be able to like associate the game with the visual, if that makes sense. I did recently with Bioshock. And, so yeah, I'll definitely be playing Splinter Cell Conviction. So let me know in the comments yeah, if you've played that one and if it's a good time. But yeah, that was the Leeds Retro Gaming Market and what a market it was. When I first walked in, I thought to myself, oh, this isn't massive. And it wasn't. It's probably not as big a venue as the usual venue, which is Doncaster. It's back in Doncaster in the next one, which I think is May. Um, but pound for pound, probably the best game market I've ever been to in terms of the quality of product. There was just so many great things. Quite often I go to these events and I'm so excited beforehand and I've spent days and weeks previously selling things, saving up money as I did for this event. And then you get there and you just can't spend your money because there's nothing that you really want or it's so overpriced that you just can't bring yourself to do it just because you're there. But today was the opposite. Like, I don't even know if I saw every single store. It was so busy and I was talking to so many different people that I probably could have easily done a couple more laps and probably left with a couple more bags full of games had I done so. It was, uh, yeah, it was a fantastic day. And yeah, it's definitely a day that's going to live long in the memory. And just going with fantastic people. Speaking of which... It was genuinely one of the best weekends I've had in a long, long time. Going out with the whole squad. Yeah, uh, myself, Theo, Kev, Dan on the day, bent legs. We had the weekend of all weekends and I can't wait to show you guys everything that we got up to. Um, yeah, it's going to be probably the best vlog I've ever put out. I'm just going to say it now because I've not even had a chance to go through all the footage yet. But if I can transpire it to video anywhere near as good as what living it was like, then... It's going to be a hell of a vlog and like I said already, in terms of pickups, just, yeah, I don't really, words won't do it justice. Make sure you tune in on a Sunday and make sure you also go and check out Theo's video over at Slime House. I think this was his first ever game fair and I could tell he loved it and yeah, I mean, the way he does his videos, make sure you don't miss that one. Go and head over to his uh, channel now and you'll see all his fantastic coverage of the Leeds event as well. And I think that's everything. Let me know in the comment section what your favourite pickup of mine was. Let me know if you went to the event. Let me know what you thought of it. And thank you very much for watching. Play your games. Keep it retro. I'll see you on Sunday in a bit. Slime House TV, oh, myself, the no, okay. Get troll. <laughs> Pow, get troll. Uh oh <laughs> I don't know who these people are. I don't know who these people are. <laughs>